watching Race Your Girl Television. I just finished a five day training camp with the Pacific Cycling Center here in Victoria. And uh, one of the questions I got this week while I was doing the camp was, what do I do in between days of the camp in order to recover enough that I can do the training the next day? And um, I think this uh, between session recovery routine varies from one pro to another because Everybody's body is different and um, how you respond to training might be different and the kind of training that you like to do can be different. So I can only speak from my own experience for what works for me in my body. But um, I'm more than happy to share what I found works for me and uh, if there's anything from this sort of routine, maybe it can help you at home. The routine that I have it sort of is born from my stage racing experience, what, what I found would work um, between stages in either a road race or a mountain bike stage race, things that made me feel good the next day without um, uh, compromising the speed, power, or whatever was in my legs. Because I found if I did too many things or too much stretching or too much eating or whatever, then the next day would not feel as good as the day before. My, my program is pretty simple and it's fairly conservative because I feel like you just need to do enough that you allow your body to start the repair on its own. And the whole point of a training camp is to is progressive overload. And so you're gonna get tired and you're gonna have good and bad days. And even if you do all of these things, you may have a bad day anyways. But one bad day doesn't mean that the day after that is going to be a disaster as well. And I definitely found that in this camp that I would have some good days and then those were interspersed with some very, very bad days. And that's training and that's your body and that's expected and that's no big deal. So the first thing that I, I generally try to do when I go into a camp like this is to assess my nutrition. And what you don't want to do is have a whole bunch of errands on your plate if you have a very busy schedule ahead of you. So what I do first is, is basically plan what I'm going to eat for that period of time. And I try to go to the store and buy it all. So I have um, a lot of nutritious food that uh, hopefully I've had a chance to prepare in advance so I don't have to do a lot of uh, you know too much cooking or crazy stuff. And in the meantime, eat a bunch of crap that's not nutritious because I'm so hungry that I can't get around to cooking something. So a little bit of planning in advance in, in what you're going to eat for your camp is probably a good idea. And I also feel like it's really good for me to not eat a lot of sugar when I'm doing uh, really heavy training. I, I find my body works a lot better on protein and fat and really low glycemic carbs and, uh, and that um, generally takes more time to prepare than some sugary crap out of a box. So you want to have that uh, good to go be before you go into it. And actually I'm going to share a recipe with you for this, these um, rice cake egg bacon bars that Alan Lim has in his cookbook that I find because I'm not riding seven to nine hours a day like a tour guide might ride, I probably don't need a whole bunch of those in my pocket for training, but I find they're really actually easy to eat and nice in your stomach for after a ride if you're totally starving, you've done five hours and you still have to do that half an hour brick run or you need to do your core, or you need to do something and you just need to get a little bit of food in you that and you don't want to have a sugary recovery drink or something like that, these bars are fantastic because they're, they're really good on your stomach. So. I will share that recipe on my website and uh, you can take a look there and his cookbook actually is quite good so you might want to look at that as well. So uh, having some sort of snack ready for yourself after riding, uh, keeping healthy food around so that you don't make poor choices when you're really hungry, uh, making sure that you're doing a lot of drinking um, off the bike. I like to drink a lot of sparkling water because I find flat water is is repulsive after I'm off the bike. So I drink a lot of sparkling water when in between sessions uh, and uh, just trying to get some electrolytes in and again, uh, being careful with how much sugar you're, you're putting in in between sessions. You can probably afford it uh, because you're burning so many calories, but sugar itself is not actually that great for you. Um, so you might wanna try and keep things more natural and, and keep more whole grains in your diet rather than have a bunch of sugar just because you can, because you did that long ride, you probably don't need to eat a bucket of Ben and Jerry's. So the second thing is uh, maintaining your muscle uh, quality. And 
everyone's gotten off their bike and just felt bent over and screwed because they're so tired. Uh, and you need to manage that by managing your muscles. And I don't believe a lot in stretching. Uh, I find that stretching doesn't generally help me that much. Uh, I like a lot of yoga because it's relaxing and it helps me to just sort of regenerate. So if I do yoga, it's the very slow moving, lie on the floor, legs up the wall kind of yoga poses. Uh, and then I'll do a lot of uh, foam rollering because getting during a training camp, getting and driving my car to a massage, I do that when the camp is over. But in between sessions, I don't want to do a whole bunch of errands and go and get a massage or whatever. If you can have a massage therapist come to your house, then you're probably going to be, uh, and you're really lazy and you don't, don't want to use these rolling things, then that's fantastic. But uh, I have to go to the massage therapist and that's another errand that I try to avoid. So I find these little foam rollery things are, are quite handy. So this one's a, this orange thing. Uh, this is like uh, TP Therapy makes this stuff. And so the orange one's good. It just gets all your big muscle groups. It's, it's uh, a little bit soft, but it's this is good for all your big muscle groups like see roll, roll up your roll out your quads and your hamstrings and things like that your back your the top of your back your neck on this kind of thing uh when i get into camps where i'm doing a lot of uh running i find these harder ones are better because uh, your calf muscles are basically your your springs off the ground and i find that i have to really manage my soleus uh and you know your achilles area in the bottom of my feet so i need to use these these ones and I'm pretty aggressive with this stuff after running in order to keep myself healthy in that regard. Uh, I also actually like using a golf ball on the bottom of my feet when I run a lot. Uh, you definitely want to get your calves and stuff with this first but then um, just standing at the computer or whatever rolling my the bottom of my feet on a golf ball uh, is good for that fascia on the bottom of your foot and it feels really good so uh, and it generally keeps you uh, further away from injury. So the rollering stuff is key because you just want to maintain that quality in your muscle. And then if you have something that's really aggravated, then you, you need to do things like go to a physio or a chiro and, and, and address anything that's flaring up immediately rather than trying to train through it. Uh, but most of the time, this kind of stuff will help you to feel good enough for the next day of training that you can do it. Uh, and then the third thing I do is I always do a little bit of core every day. Uh, even if I'm really cracked, I'll still do about 10 minutes of holding the plank position. So I'll do like the side plank and the front plank and the, the other side and I'll just alternate sides and, and, and even, do, even doing just 10 minutes of that per day. I feel like your core muscles have to be fired in order for them to know that they're supposed to fire on their own. And so if you're constantly... Uh, if you're constantly using them in a, in a focused way, then when they're called upon, when you're actually doing your activity, they're, they're more naturally gonna, you know, do their thing. So I find that if I'm reminding my core muscles that they're supposed to be active, then even when I'm tired, I can maintain better form on my bike or better form swimming or better form running because my core is engaged correctly. So I find finding that 10 minutes in between sessions per day to, to do the core stuff does uh, help you maintain better form, which in turn can make for a better camp. There are some other modalities that people in, incorporate into their recovery routine in order to make themselves feel better for the next day. And, and I think the research is mixed on whether or not they're actually effective in recovery or whether they just make you feel better, which means you can train more because you think you feel better. Uh, either way, if you, if you think that you need to have that boost in order to get through your ne next session, there's probably no downside to any of these things, but um, you may not have to do them. I think your nutrition, I think some maintenance of your muscles and hydration, and I think the core stuff, I think those are the, the four key things for me that really... Uh, get me get me ready for the next day the rest of that stuff like I'll do ice baths in the river when it's around um, I, I think uh, compression stuff makes a lot of sense particularly flying or or things like that and and sitting around I think they feel, feel really good and I think that that can help you uh, and and so I think that those those kind of things there's no there's definitely no downside to it uh, but I think that if you're not addressing your nutrition and 
uh, actual recovery, like sleeping, uh, and then just training with a with an appropriate and sensible program. Uh, I think you have to you have to cover the basics first, and then look at all those extra things. And a sensible training program at the end of the day that you're you're following in a methodical way where you're not trying to make massive leaps in improvement and instead are just basically layering like small layers of improvement on each other I think is really the the best road to your best improvement because overreaching and, and getting injured or overtrained basically creates more setbacks than under training and taking longer to get there because I think the under trainer probably will get there a bit sooner so so those are my, that's my advice for today. That's actually what I do. And um, we'll see if any of that is effective in 2012. Thanks for watching Race Girl Television. You can leave any questions or comments you may have at racergirl.com. See you next time.